everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. There are a few topics I wanna discuss in this video. And I first wanna start off by talking about DMX. DMX's family and friends actually put together a beautiful memorial service for him yesterday. The service took place at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, and his casket was carried by a big monster truck surrounded by a bunch of motorcycles. He came at the center in true DMX fashion, and the actual service was great. Kanye West's Sunday Choir came to perform and they put on an amazing show. And all of DMX's children came on stage and delivered some very heartfelt messages. And his daughter even recited an original song that she wrote for the service. It was really beautiful, very touching. And also DMX's friends came on stage, the Rough Riders, the Locks, Eve, Nas, and Swiss Beats came on stage to pay their respects. And Swiss Beats said something very interesting and it sounded like his comment was directed towards some people in particular. I'm gonna play what he said. The things that I'm witnessing from my brother's passing, it's a big educational, it was a big educational thing for me to learn. I'm glad that I got to see it at this age. A lot of people ain't your friends. A lot of people ain't your family. And I need everybody to do a will. You have to do your will. You do not want strangers, bloodsuckers, handling your business when you're not here. You want the ones that you love handling your business. But I'm gonna make sure my brother's straight. I'm gonna make sure my brother's family's straight. My brother kids are straight and everybody in here better do the same as well. Now, I don't know exactly who Swiss Beats was referring to when he said there were bloodsuckers handling DMX's business, but he made a very good point about getting a will. I think everybody at a certain point, especially people with money, need to have some type of will in place because they would never want their estate to be in the hands of the wrong people when they pass. DMX has a huge family. He has a lot of children and there should be no reason why the money he made in his career should not go to his family. But unfortunately, his business wasn't all together. So there are some people who are greedy enough to cash in on his death and not give the family anything. And it's actually pretty sad, but one good thing I could say is DMX does have a lot of friends who will look out for his family. But this whole situation is just another example of why it's important for these entertainers to have their business in order. Now on to the next topic. Jordan Woods is not making peace with Kris Jenner or the Kardashian family, despite what some reports have said. Now, Jordan did receive a PR box from Kris Jenner's cleaning company called Safely, and she promoted it on her IG story. However, Jordan's mother is making it be known that this is not a peace offering. Jordan's mother, Elizabeth Woods, told TMZ that the gift was actually sent by Kris and Chrissy Teigen's PR team. Chrissy Teigen actually has part ownership in the company as well, so it's not just owned by Kris Jenner. TMZ said it's important to note the new line belongs to Chris as much as it belongs to Chrissy. And just so y'all know, Jordan and Chrissy are cool with each other. Fans started losing their minds earlier this month when Jordan took to Instagram and posted a series of stories showing off the box gift, which again was sent by Safely's PR team, even if Jordan tagged Chrissy and Chris. There was also a bouquet of flowers and a handwritten note, again signed by Chrissy and Chris. So basically, Chrissy put Jordan on the PR list and Jordan got the box and promoted it as a favor. And she probably was paid to promote it too. So Jordan's mother wants to shut down the rumors that this whole gift exchange was a peace offering between Jordan and Kris Jenner. And I think she wanted to clear this up because people were kind of clowning Jordan for promoting Kris Jenner's brand after everything that happened. If you know the backstory, you know that Jordan was dragged by Kris Jenner's daughters and she was smeared in the media, all because Chloe's baby daddy, Tristan Thompson, kissed her. So Jordan took all of that backlash and meanwhile, Tristan was brought back into the family fold, even though he was the main one in the wrong. So I would think after all of that, Jordan wouldn't be silly enough to befriend that family again. 
And I'm not saying that she should be at odds with them for the rest of her life. I don't think Jordan is the type to hold a grudge like that, but she knows that they can't be trusted. So it wouldn't make sense for her to be all buddy buddy with them again. <laughs> But anyway, on to the next topic. I want to talk about Megan Thee Stallion because a few days ago, Megan announced that she was taking a hiatus. She made an interesting post on Instagram and the message said this, Megan Thee Stallion is recharging. Due to the demands of the hot girl lifestyle, Megan has now entered a period of regeneration to prepare for what's next. In her absence, management will manage all social posting on behalf of the hot girl coach. The hotties lead a brave resistance in anticipation for the return of their fearless captain. Now, this was a very interesting announcement. And of course, when she made this announcement, people came to their own speculations. I saw some people online speculating that Megan was pregnant with Partisan's baby. <laughs> also, there are rumors that Megan was allegedly getting surgery. This is also another wild rumor that I don't believe, but if Megan does come back looking a little different, then I definitely will have to question it. But honestly, I don't think Megan is getting surgery and I definitely don't believe Megan is pregnant, but she may have taken a break for her mental health. Maybe she was working too much and she probably hasn't had a chance to sit down and handle some things in her personal life. So it could be that something is going on with her personally that made her want to take a break. I think that's probably the main reason why she's stepping away from social media. But I also think that maybe she's stepping back to make a shift in her career. It's possible that she might be gearing up to release new music and taking a hiatus may build up anticipation for that, but she will be expected to come back strong. She has to come back with good music, good singles, good visuals. She has to really deliver. When Megan enters her next era, I want her to drop an album that far surpasses good news. Good News, in my opinion, was really a mediocre album, to be honest. I didn't really care for it. I also wasn't really a fan of the singles that were released from the album. I mean, besides Savage, I think she could have released some better singles. She recently released her song with Lil Durk called Movie, and that single hasn't really made much noise. And I feel like the reason why it hasn't made much noise is because Lil Durk's audience doesn't really listen to Megan Thee Stallion. I think Megan would have been better off releasing Freaky Girls with SZA because her audience would be more interested in that. Also, I still strongly feel like Megan should have released What's New as a single because What's New is the best song on Good News. That's just my personal opinion. But the songs that she has been releasing lately haven't really been gaining enough traction. And I think it's because something is missing in her music. Everything else that she does is great. She knows how to rap. She knows how to perform. She's naturally talented, but I think the music has to be better. And she has to give us something that we haven't seen or heard from her before. So maybe this hiatus is a good thing. It will give her time to rebrand herself and figure out what she wants to do next. And I do hope she comes back with a new sound, a new direction and stronger music. Now on to the next topic, I do wanna briefly talk about Saweetie because she did do an interview with Hip Hop and More and she revealed that she currently is attending an artist development boot camp. Now this announcement came after her very messy performance at the Triller Fight Club. She got a lot of negative feedback for that performance and I even did a video about it myself and I kind of pointed out some things that she needed to work on. I said that she really needs to start working on her craft. And Saweetie seems like she has been listening to the critiques because currently she's in artist boot camp to improve her performing skills. What's on the vacation agenda after y'all get done with the work? What y'all finna do? Um, we're, we're like on workation because I still got work. I still got interviews. I'm actually in a boot camp right now, artist development. So wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you boot camping? Like, are you in the boot camp? Or are you boot camping other yeah. people? How's this work? No, I'm in the boot camp. They work in me. Word. Okay. Artists never talk about this. So let's let's go into this because now I'm interested. What mm -hmm. takes place in this artist development boot camp? What happens? Well, for me, I'm going to focus on what I struggle with. I struggle with um, breathing control. I'm going to work on my dance move, my details, all that good stuff. My, okay. my just body, my stamina, my everything. 
So that's what Saweetie had to say. And honestly, I think it's a good thing that she listened to the critiques and she's actually using it to better herself. With that type of attitude, she'll continue to be successful because she's not allowing the backlash to discourage her, but she's allowing it to motivate her. And I think that's a great thing. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.